Hello, Herman here with another episode in the ClearPass workshop series where we build a ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with Wired Wireless Active Directory and much more. So this is the second video in the ClearPass guest section. Uh, in the last video, we created a self-registration portal, so we were able to uh, self-register a guest and create a guest account in the ClearPass guest database. In this episode, we will be creating the services that are needed to uh, authenticate the guest uh, on the ClearPass site. So let's go back to uh, the ClearPass site. Uh, here are my services. So you can see we have our uh, wireless services wired uh, admin all done in the previous episodes. So if you want to see how those are created, uh, go back to the uh, previous episode. Then we need to create the guest services. And normally I'm not so a uh, big fan of wizards, but in this case, because uh, there is a pretty good uh, guest authentication with Mac caching wizard, and uh, you need to create quite some stuff to make uh, the whole thing happen. I chose to uh, use the, um, I choose to use the uh, wizard uh, in this case. So let's put a prefix here. So make it uh, WS uh, guest. So all services and stuff that's created will get this prefix. Here we can uh, select the guest SSID. So we will be creating a guest SSID guest one and uh, that will be done on the instant AP. So you see, we have already configured this in the wireless section of the workshop. Um, we are just reusing this and this is yeah typically to make a radius uh, up and running. So let's go here. Here are the Mac caching uh, se se settings. Uh, so what is Mac caching? Mac caching is uh, a mechanism when users return to the network, if they have authenticated in uh, the past, they are automatically allowed access to the network. So they don't need to go through a get authentication again. And that's based uh, on the MAC address. You can set it for the full uh, account uh, lifetime, or you can put it maybe for a day or for a week or for a month or for six months. Um, by the way, you can change these settings um, as well later on. Um, but for now, let's leave it on the uh, account expiry time posture we will not be doing uh, that right now and then here in the access restrictions uh, we need to put in a few uh, parameters here so we need to have a role for uh, the captive portal access so this will be the role on the Aruba instant that will uh, do the uh, guest redirect so let's call it guest redirect uh, then uh, here we can set the number of devices that are allowed so if people are, have more than uh, one device, they can only use uh, one at a time. So let's put it uh, to one here. Uh, then the bandwidth, which is the uh, amount of traffic that can be transferred before a device is uh, blocked on the network. Let's put it to 50 MB uh, for now. And uh, we need to, or we can put a guest role here uh, and let's put it to guest uh, minus one, which is the default role for the guest network on Aruba instance. We can change it, for example, to put bandwidth limits or to put uh, special firewall rules on it. Uh, but for now, let's uh, take the default one, uh, which is the same name as the SSID. So now let's uh, create those services by add service. And what we can see is that uh, here uh, it has created eight enforcement profiles, two policies, uh, two role mappings, and two uh, services to the network. And uh, yeah, if we see here the services, oh, let's do it like this. Uh, what we can see is that we have uh, two services here. So let's uh, move these up to the Aruba instant where it makes more sense. So let's put it there. Again, it's important to have a good structure in your uh, services. Um, so let's have a look here. Um, let's first uh, try this one, which is the uh, normal radius enforcement. So stuff you can see here is that it's checking here. If the uh, SID name is guest one, then it will go into the database and uh, check against the guest user repository. That's the database where we created that uh, guest user in. Uh, we are authorizing against the time source and the endpoint repository. Uh, we have some role mapping here. 
um, which can uh, use the uh, guest types in the guest registration portal. So there are three numbers that correspond to different guest types. And here in the enforcement, what you can see is uh, first there is a check if there are already uh, devices on the network. So if the unique device count for this uh, specific user is greater than one, then we deny access. So it will be pushed back to the captive portal. And uh, otherwise, if the uh, guest, uh, if the role of the user is guest, which is for all uh, self-registered guest uh, stations, uh, we can uh, see that it pushes out a uh, few enforcement profiles. So it set uh, a Mac caching session timeout. Uh, it set the, uh, the the bandwidth limit. Uh, we can see here there is a uh, guest mesh caching session limit. So it's the number timeout number um, and uh, a few more. And what is nice is that we can uh, just go in. So if we go here to the profiles and uh, for example here, see uh, what does the session uh, limit um, so what it does here is it will check uh, simultaneous use for the guest user and um, if it finds that there are too many devices it will disconnect and block access so not things that you can make up yourself so that's why i created uh, this services and uh, stuff with the um, with the wizard um, yeah, another one this here is the uh, profile so where we will uh, send back the aruba user role as uh, guest one and the username uh, as the uh, username as entered during the authentication so then the client uh, or the instant ap knows the username as well also uh, also if there is uh, mac authentication for example so let's go into the mac authentication service uh, similar here so here we check if the mac address equals to the username so that's normal for mac authentication then we check if the sid name is guest one if so we authenticate against the endpoint repository uh, authorization and here is some uh, mac caching checking so um, it's checked here for the device uh, count uh, and it's uh, checking if the account has uh, not expired and is enabled and uh, if it's uh, be uh, before the uh, expiration time so uh, when we see this in action it probably will be uh, even more clear um, but here yeah if we have mac caching guest we will return that uh, guest captive portal so these are the steps to create the services uh, in the next video we will bind this all together and uh, then we will configure our instant AP to make use of these services and the registration portal. Till now, I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you uh, like these videos, uh, please put your comments below this video and subscribe to the channel so you will be notified on uh, next editions of the workshop. Thank you very much.